So today guys I want to show you how to create collision detector and how to make our snake longer. Uh, what I mean by that is how to make more cubes that will be following our main cube, which is our head, what we have right now. So without further ado, let's get into it. achieved so far. So we declare some class variables which are size of our board, we have different elements 3D and we have a flag that is showing if the game is on or not. We have also animation ID. Um, this host listener you are familiar with, we have uh, our lifecycle hook that is basically creating the game, creating the snake and rendering everything all together. Um, next we have a function to start the game, basically to start animation. And once we are requested our animation frames, then we are receiving and assigning our animation ID, which in a class method we are stopping by canceling it based on this animation ID that we assigned before. Um, next we have create game class, the method that we basically, that you are also familiar with, but additionally, and additionally to this, we are setting camera helper that is basically showing, drawing the lines on our scene to show us from which angle and how big the camera is that is casting the light, which is casting our shadow. It's just a helper, right? So we are creating boundaries here and boundaries we are creating by just 
making the boxes around our board. All right, we're creating snake as you're familiar with already. Um, we're just moving snake. Okay, so now we have our crucial method of our class that is actually a collision detector. This is very simple logic, it's just checking if the position of our snake is higher or lower than our boundaries. And because we are starting, our starting point is at zero, so we have to divide our height or our width by two. Because the size of our boundaries is one, so we have to take one from the final size of it. And when we detect it, then we just stopping our game, which is canceling our animation and stopping everything from moving. So that's the basically um, logic behind our collision detector. The game is running. So as you can see, we have shadow already. Looks slightly better. And those lines are the direction that shadow is the light basically casting. And if we hit the boundary, game is over. And if you are curious how I created our main menu, so let's check our template. And template is here. And we additionally have our div element that is um, assigned with this ngif statement, which is basically adding this element when this value is false. And here is our main menu. That is opposition absolutely. And um, on the click event, we starting our game and assigning the true value to our variable, which is actually removing this element from our DOM. And that's it basically. to know how I created collision detection with snake when it's tail actually so let me show you all right so what we have here so we have a um, private variable of a class that is our mesh and it's array of meshes and another thing is box tree which is actually a uh, bounding box which is not actually a real element it's just a fictitious uh, element that is actually invisible but what it does it can help us to detect when it's intersection with other elements so what we do all right so let's get to it okay so here we have a method that is creating our tail and what it does and okay I, I will fix it later on but it's just to show you how it's made in general how it works so what we have here we have number of segments and we just taking the length of our array and divided it by 10 because when we create each element that will show on our on our map basically we want it to going smoothly. So every each step that is that has value of one, we create 10 of them. So when it's turning, then it's going smoothly instead of like jumping around. That's why we create so many of them. Okay, so per one element, we have 10 of real meshes that you can see in our game. And on every loop, we just creating our box geometry and mesh and we just pushing it into our array. So the position here 
is just per 0.1 so we have 10 elements per just one so this is our mesh and here we just taking um, computing binding box because when we computed it then we can use our binding box that I declared later um, before I mean this bounding box that is invisible that I mentioned before so then we can use this and combine it together to detect our collisions basically we want to make it quite efficient so per just 10 of those meshes we create one bounding element bounding box in this case to detect our collisions okay so let's check our collision detector and okay let's check how we update position of our tail so what we do we just looping through our array position of our previous element we just uh, copying to our next element and we do this with each element in our array it's basic it's simple as that as you can say and uh, the next thing is that we have to also update position of our bending box every time we have like the almost the middle element of those tens we are having our bounding box because it's in the middle so it's covered the whole area when it's covered the whole area element from our array we copying bounding box of that particular element then in, in uh, that what you actually see which is a mesh and we applying matrix world all right so this is our updating position okay so let's check how collision works in this case uh, those bounding boxes then we can just invoke the method which is checking if it intersection with our head of our snake and when it does and we just checking it when the length of the snake is longer than three elements you know it's because you, you just can intersect when it's so small right that's that's very simple and we just checking it and when it intersects then you know the game is over basically so from our previous update we also blocked um changing direction when you're going up then you can go down because you know you will intersect our boxes and the game will be over so we just block this um okay so let's check how it works so our game is running up and running let's start the game okay so what I created or I just created okay let's see how many times I invoke it like four five six seven eight nine okay so we have nine elements of our tail and that's how it looks like you know, in practice all right so as you can see it goes quite smoothly so let's try to intersect with our tail and you, as you can see, it works pretty well. So that's it for today, guys. And see you in the next part when we will actually implement um, the game itself. Because right now the gameplay doesn't exist, basically. So in the next episode, we'll just implement uh, collecting apples and so on. See ya.